Welcome back to the Latin Rouge Cycling Podcast for the Tour de France Famavec Zwift Stage 4. We're already halfway through. I can't believe it. Hella here with Benji as always. 126 k's from Troyes, Troy, Bar sur Aube. It's the Chemin Blanc Champagne gravel stage. I thought it was a lovely design, actually. I really do think this was a good stage design. I think it was worthy of hype. But this actually turned out to be the Tour de France Famavec Swift, their version of the bridge stage in the Tour de, male Tour de France. <laughs> this is what this turned out to be. There's four gravel sectors. Three of them come after very punchy, steep, narrow, paved climbs, which I think is interesting. 1,500 meters, 7% sort of stuff. The second one was uh, foul. It had like a 17% pinch at the end and had descents in the gravel. There's one gravel climb with about 33 kilometers to go, 5K 3.1%. And then the last gravel sector is about 15, 20 Ks to go. And then it's like two short paved climbs. So I, I was thinking Benji, all the discussions last night and this morning in the SD works in track team buses as maybe unsavory as it sounds. We discussed it yesterday would be, we've got to try put some big time into a sick Annemiek van Vleuten today. Yes, yeah, certainly. But there's also been some discussions all over social media when it comes to are these gravel sections too hard and so forth because pictures started showing up this morning before the stage of like bigger rocks and harsher gravel sectors and people are giving their opinions again. Should this fit in a Grand Tour? Should this fit in the Tour de France Femme? Who knows? Regardless of that, could that have an influence on perhaps the offensive actions of teams? Would a team be like, okay, perhaps we need to switch to a, a strategy of trying to make sure we get safely to a stage instead of going about it offensively? Or do you think that has no influence on that? I think I think there was a part of that, especially Trek today, especially them. They were hyper-aggressive the last two days with Balsamo, even to the point where we were like, holy shit, like they're launching intermediate yeah. sprints. We we're like, this is unexpected. I liked it, but unexpected. And, and then today, quite passive. On the stage, which I thought suited them, it, it was. It, I think that was it. That must have been it. That they're trying to protect the LB third on GC. I, I don't really know. But before we get into the stage itself, I want to thank and shout out our show partners, Zwift, also the title sponsor of this race, making it happen. Thanks to its combination of fantasy and real world riding destinations, Zwift can give you a taste of riding in the mountains with its epic KOM, Alp de Zwift, and Ven Top climbs. We're talking mountains in this recap at the end, the Vosges climbs coming up and what we think will happen there. There are also flatter and more rolling routes. If you don't fancy trying to replicate those Petit Ballon style stages, you can do so from the comfort of your own home, never having to ride alone with Zwift, having tons of events. You can even join the LRCP Zwift Club. So you can go to Zwift.com down below to get your free seven-day trial to check it out. Breakaway Benji, I, I said before I'm going to get it wrong, <laughs> Demaya and Demaya, uh, and there's Asensio. I, <laughs> they're not related. It's spelled differently. Yeah, it's uh, Coralie de May from uh, Saint-Michel Aubert. We've got Valérie de May from Live Racing and indeed Asensio, like you said, from Set Up to Zit. So roughly on the edge of, uh, of correction there, but you're fine. You're fine. We'll allow it. We had those riders basically taking the three first spots in the uh, intermediate sprint. And then the peloton came. Lorena Wibbers was the first one there. Beat Confalonieri there and Kopecky. Voss only got eighth there. So lost some points towards the others, but she had quite a lead already before today's stage. So not too much to worry when it comes to that yet, unless the outcome of the stage would change that eventually. Now, looking at the first sectors upcoming, I felt like it, like you said, we had that hill before the gravel sector, and I do want to talk about that because I think that's actually a good thing. I think it's a good thing to have a hill it. before the gravel sectors because you thin out the group before you get to the gravel sectors, and therefore yeah. it's less dangerous to it's start. much safer. Yeah, not an entire peloton onto the gravel. Well, imagine that was the problem with Roubaix. I've been talking to the riders. I was talking to Jack about it he crashed obviously in the roglic hay bale crash yeah as a point of comparison he said 
the most dangerous part of that race wasn't the cobbles. It was the fighting on the flat. Like he said, before the cobbles started, it was mental, sprinting out of corners like he'd never been seen before because it's a short stage early, everyone's fresh. As Benji said, this climb thinned it out so much. We get to that first climb, we see, uh, I think, Asensio and one of Tamaya <laughs> attacking each other, going for the, the points. And the GC group's like 12 riders into the gravel sector. Like, kopecky has <laughs> gone. Vibas is gone. Voss is sort of hanging there. And I was like, wow, this is the perfect opportunity where no one's going to come back on the gravel. And yet, and this is an opportunity for SD Works, Trek, after that first sector, to send riders between sectors up the road, maybe as satellite riders. But that never happened. We saw Vollering come to the front on the gravel. She looked sublime on it. Persico, a revelation this season. She was so good on that first sector, um, like really classy sort of technical bike rider. And yep. yet after it was Benji, after that short, steep climb, after that first gravel sector, it all just came back. No teams tried to use a numerical advantage. Yeah, and I think it's on one end that you've got the same kind of thing that happens when you see Men's Roubaix, for example, when you get to through it Adenberg, you go through that sector, the group reduces, and after that sector, it kind of stops for a bit, the tension in the race, and you see potential riders trying to slip away in that sense but here it was that peloton just kind of stopped and other people slowly but surely came back because for example Ode Bionic from Movistar punctured on on that gravel sector was able to come back afterwards and just in general it felt like we had the peloton coming close to the breakaway and then eventually the breakaway getting away again on that section between the sectors so indeed no team picking it up no team willing to pick it up from so far from the finish because it's still 55 kilometers to go We've got six riders per team. They might not have full teams anymore after that sector. So I think it's all a combination of that. I think it's they want to make sure that what they use is vital. And perhaps if they go now, they think that it might be too early to do so. But for example, 7K later, we get to the second sector. And that's what you mentioned when it comes to the profile. 17% pod on that steep, steep sector. Lorena Wibis dropped right there. She's off the back, not too vital for today's stage anyway, but just wanted to mention it. Asensio has dropped in the break, so basically only Corelia uh, de Met is still left from Saint Michel. And in the peloton, we started seeing some bigger names dropping, Kopecky dropping, and that was an early one for me. She's clearly not in, in top form no, right now, eh? Can't be. Like, she is not in her strata shape. It's not possible um, on the second climb like that because no riders were really attacking. Like, Mulman was staying at the front with Nivea Dioma and maybe Longa Borghini side by side as a trio. But the group was almost bigger than over the first climb into the first sector and no one's attacked. And I think, I know I just found it curious. Like if your SD works, Mulman and Vollering, what are they? Two of the best three climbers in the race, even on this short climb. Vollering's great bike handler. Like isn't this the place where you put Mop... Mulman Ford, we saw it yesterday. Mulman went clear with Nuvia Doma and Borghini, and it was Voss who brought her back. But I don't think Voss bring them back after that short climb. And then you can have Vollering in the seat. I thought this is yeah. where to do that. And it's so far out that, like, you can really take some time and apply some real pressure, but it didn't happen. And people were having mechanicals and coming back. Uh, Ludwig punctured. And her team helped her. And she, I don't know if she punctured or had like a stone stuck between a derailleur mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. She came back eventually. Mas uh, Garcia also, I think in the third sector, she came back. Although she like, when she, I think she pushed over a bike exchange rider who split between her and yeah, her team yeah, and her yeah, changing yeah. bike. And even Van Vleuten had an issue and she came back. Like, I don't know, just, in between the sectors, I was just surprised. Like, Marcus went to the front, sort of steady pace, but yeah, I was just a bit surprised. Yeah, and like, I was criticizing FDG before this Tour de France film for not bringing Chapman to this race and having both Lenegg, Guazzini, and so forth, and they kind of proved that they're vital today when it comes to bringing her to the Ludwig back on that sector right there. Chapman would probably have been able to do the same, but it's still, they, they proved themselves today. So I want to take a small step back on that end. 
Well, now, Chapman would have won the stage. Yeah, would have won the stage. Yeah. Facts. Okay. Would have won the stage. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> she would have. Uh, she would have done pretty well. I believe you there. Like it's. It's also interesting to see that the domestiques that drop last minute, like the Magnaldi form of Garcia, can play such a vital role in trying to bring back those riders. So when you're a domestique and when you're on a on a gravel sector, holding on as much as possible to make sure you drop as late as possible can be very helpful if your leader ends up puncturing towards the end of that sector, for example. And like, we've had some close ones today, like Nivia Doma thing you mentioned, like Shimano car almost took her out when trying to come back. And then when it comes to Mavi Garcia, she had something similar with a car that ended up almost well, hitting her or? The car did hit her. Well, yeah. it's tough to say... She's coming back, and she's got a team car there. The team car, I'm not blaming the driver, to yeah. be honest. They were driving at a pretty steady and constant speed. They didn't move, but they were quite tight to the group she was trying to slide into, and she dunked in too early yeah. and touched her back wheel with her car and nearly got ran over. Uh, luckily, she got back on the bike, but that could have been very bad. It was kind of, yeah, it was almost like the Jay Vine crash last year, but... Could have been worse almost. His was at higher speed, but she was in front of the car. And then we get to the last sector, and Van Vleuten punctures. And it was visible live. You actually can see it in the front on shot if you're watching it closely. It was visible. I don't know what was said over race radio. Mm -hmm. She punctures. I think she punctured. And at the same time, just out of the sector with 20Ks to go, Royce goes solo. So finally, we do see the move of a solo move from SD Works. But uh, is it right to do it then? Because like, if you're, no. if you're, you should be pacing then, right? Or I'm not sure no. they knew immediately. I'm yeah, not you're sure right. that they knew immediately. Uh, it's kind of like the Wout van Aert Calais thing, isn't it? With Jonas ahead of Pagacha, Wout van Aert ahead, we kind of have a similar similar situation. And they did know at some point. I think they've confirmed in an interview. Is it Peter van der Deen? That's the Twitter account. That yes, he confirmed that SD Works did know at some point when Van Lurten was off the back. And I have to say, I think SD Works have disrespected Annemiek van Lurten the last two days. I think she should be offended. <laughs> they have had two opportunities. Yeah. To put time into her, I don't care about any unwritten rules. Come on, the race was on here. You have a puncture, you have a puncture. Like, is mm -hmm. the Tour de France? And they should have tried to put some big time into her. Yesterday they didn't. Today they had another opportunity. And if she's at 95% in the Vosges, big trouble for them. Wait, you're, you're saying, so when, when you started off with the disrespect, I, I was expecting you to say that she broke an, uh, that they broke an unwritten rule. No, SD Works disrespected away, but her. The opposite. By not pacing, correct. By not considering her reputation correct. as a godlike climber. And they said, we not. don't need to take time on you. <laughs> it's disrespectful <laughs> i get it i get it and that royzer attack it actually gained quite a bit of traction like and amal yusik had tried earlier and so forth but the royzer attack is the one that really seemed to stick we had some counter attacks a three-man group with riders that are not really the ones that are going to be able to catch a, a marlon royzer up the road and no nah. i was like was there any point where you were, were like okay this is nah. coming back <laughs> Well, no, it's Royce, like her and Van Dyke, 1A and 1B, best time trials in the world. And she already had 30 seconds. Like, you're just not bringing her back on that shallow up and down terrain. I can't remember what race where she just rode away from Lebecki in the finish what? and she won the stage. Like, she's just, you're not bringing her back, even with four riders. And Trek, I thought Trek would have, well, basically, when she went, I thought yesterday the idea for Trek and SD Works would have been get Royster or Van Dyke up the road between sectors mm -hmm. and then in that lull, what is Van Vleuten going to do? She can't do anything between the sectors. And then you have a Vollering, you have a longer Borghini, try and bridge to those engines in an attack. Hopefully his AVV's behind and use them as a satellite rider. But she went for the stage. Should you and then Van Vleuten came back into the group? SD Works were blocking, and there's nothing really much to say apart from Royce won the stage um, ahead of Music and Music Ewers. I think Canyon Shram's strategy has been, um, I don't really know to be honest. It's kind of been to get Amelie Music and Royakas up the road a, yeah. a little bit, and then Navidoma to sort of 
uh, I don't know, really. Try. A pl- a try, sort of. From <laughs> She's trying like 18, 20K region today. Um, but huge win for Royce and huge time gaps too, like 124 and 140 to the group. They're the sort of time gaps that could have been applied to Van Vliet and Voss won the sprint behind ahead of Capecchi Persico. Uh, Roseman Gannon, who's a good young sprinter on Pike Exchange. Uh, Longaborghini Volering 10th. So GC, uh, Voss, keeps the jersey because Royce has taken she lost a lot of time the previous stages still 16 seconds out of Persico Nuvidoma in third I think Nuvidoma might have been attacking for the jersey if I was Canyon Shram I would have used Roy Akers and Amla Yusik to pace the punchy climbs to get rid of Voss and try to keep that going so uh, Nuvidoma could have had a day in yellow that's maybe they sort of did that sort of thing Longaball Guinea still on 21 and um yeah, any last thoughts from the stage, Benji? It kind of fizzled out. In the first sector, I thought we were going to have some huge gaps here, and then it actually kind of – the group got bigger and bigger as each sector evolved. I actually, like – when we came to the first sector, it looked like everything was relatively doable, but the second sector, there were moments where I couldn't really see a thing. Like, there was so much dust in the road that it looked like kind of – some people will get this joke. See Season 8, Episode 3 of Game of Thrones, you couldn't see anything there, like exactly on this sector right here. And I um, I thought that it would perhaps be affected more by crashes and stuff by the end of the stage. And I'm just glad that that didn't happen because the initial projections of how hard these cobble – well, these gravel sections would be were – that we'd see a lot of punctures and perhaps a lot of riders crashing and that riders didn't crash out. Some did. I think Charlotte Cole ended up DNFing during the stage. I haven't right. read an update yet, but it's a big uh, a big thing when it comes to Weavis' lead out that has gone in this race with limited sprint opportunities left. But still, it's a, a valuable... Well, tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just glad that that didn't happen. You're right. It's kind of... I don't know about the bridge comparison. The bridge was completely uh, <laughs> not the what was expected. The bridge stage sucked. Yeah, that was this, like there was so yeah. many. There were like custom drone and helicopter shots of the bridge. We were like, it's ripping, going to rip apart the race. And it was like the UAE tour where Jasper Philipson got off the bike and started walking next to the bike. <laughs> That's what that <laughs> final ended up being. So apart from Lampard being crashed, but yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. This was not like that. Uh, but I did expect some GC aggressiveness mm-hmm. from Trek and SD Works. I would say that I now think Juliette Lebou can top three this race on GC. Her shape and prominence at the front has been surprising for a lightweight rider in mm-hmm. these stages. And I think that bodes really well for the mountains. I think, and I, and I thought Lippert should have paced for her today, actually, as well. So I, I think she's just really one to keep an eye on. I'm starting to like low-key think about a potential top five for Persico, like fifth or seventh or a position like that. She got seven in the Giro Don, so that's a, a pretty damn good GC results. Now, when it comes to these uh, brutal climbing stages that are to come, a lot of riders are relatively untested on the ones with three major calls in it. That's for Stage seven is crazy. Like, yeah. I have no idea what will happen. Yeah. It's going to be funny. Eh? Can't complain <laughs> about that. But you're right. Like... We don't. Maybe her forty-minute power profile is really good. Yeah. Like she looks in great shape. Who knows? I think that suits Labu. That's why I like Labu. Yeah, and like with Persico, like the funniest part about this entire stage is that everybody's struggling on these gravel sectors and so forth. And uh, the one that got third in the World Championship cyclocross, Silvia Persico, just on the first gravel sector is. Casually getting her hands off the steer, she's grabbing a bottle, oh, she's from taking CX. the gel of the bottle. Yeah, third in uh in worlds last year, so okay. that's where she got those uh those skills and the punch, and she's showing that off one hundred percent in this uh Tour de France farm quite definitely. And I'm curious to see where that lands. I agree, Labou was also uh, one of the riders I had for top five initially, and she's doing really well. It's just that in general we've had GC wise like. What will Mariana Vos do on the major climb? She's gone, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. She I I swear, Belgian TV was mentioning Vos as a potential GC rider, and I was like, okay, that's where it ends for me here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. I think it's Labou, Volering, Mulman, Longaborghini, and the big ace is uh, Van Flurten. 
and I'll be curious to see how Mulman and Volering play it. I actually think Mulman might be better on those really long climbs as a yep. pure climber. But tomorrow's stage is not one of them. 175 Ks, they're getting closer to the Vosges, maybe in there from bar le duc to Sentier de Vosges. It has a rolly parkour. The last climb is 1,500 meters, 4.2 percent, 20 Ks from the finish. But it's up and down rolly all day. There's a little, I don't know, there's a little something uncategorized with two, three Ks to go. It shouldn't be a problem. It really should be a sprint. It really should um, for Lorena Vibas and DSM. But I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Voss in a sprint. I think Vibas struggles, um, but I also think this could be a, a break, a fault, and a Grace Brown. But I don't know, like Kopecky as well, but her shape doesn't look good. It really should be a sprint. It's 20 Ks from the finish, that 1,500-meter 4, 4% climb. The question really to me is that what teams will be able to control or will be willing to control from the peloton knowing that Lorena Vibas is so good when it comes to her sprint on the initial stage? And that's why I'm also leaning towards the opportunity that certain riders might try and attack somewhere. And it's curious, like, our team's going to try and explode on that Col du Dubois, which is, like, still with 20 kilometers to go. It's possible if they can put DSM in trouble there, then they might be able to do so. But what team is going to do so? We're looking at bonus seconds at the top. So I'm expecting Anivia Doma and Longo Borghini and so forth to fight for it again, just like they did on literally every bonus second sprint in this race so far. I um I don't think I'm gonna go for Rebus on this one. I might regret it tomorrow. And Trek I will go. Ball snow. Come on. I think her form is also it's similar to Kopecky, right? It's like yeah, it's also weird. not that great. But I'm gonna go with not Persico. I'm gonna go with I'm I'm gonna go with Balsamo. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do it anyway. I think Voss will win if it's not the break because there's no way she's getting dropped. And I think, apart from Vibas, she puts everyone on the, on the ice with the sprint. Um, but I would really like to see, I presume there's some GC gaps now and there's some riders who can get in a breakaway who aren't a big threat. I'm trying to look for a suitable rider. Surely Royak is... Where's Emily Usyk? <laughs> she's on 326. Uh, I'd like to see maybe... Mm -hmm. No, they won't do that. Uh, Van Anroy's on five minutes. Faulkner's on five minutes. Uh, Castellan's on five minutes. Grace Brown's on six minutes. I'd like to see all of them have a go. And if if Kopecky's not up to it, I'd also like to see SD Works launch someone like Van Brook Black or a Royster again, frankly, yep. on that sort of climb. Because I don't think Kopecky in this shape uh, maybe she got boxed in, but I think Foss is way quicker. But anyway, that was our recap yep. of the, the white gravel stage. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to Zwift for supporting the show, and we'll see you with the stage five recap tomorrow. Ciao.